So. You have a lovely front room. Thank you very much. Fresh <laughs> roses. It, that's just what's going on camera. <laughs> I love it. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. It's all right. Um, so, I mean, I've only seen the, the first couple of episodes of the series. And I mean, from the title alone, it seems a little bit misleading. There wasn't much of the romance there, um, <laughs> which, you know, I'm not complaining. I'm not about that bothered. But there was a whole lot of, um, say, guilt-ridden anguish, especially from Ramesh, your, your character, De Deacon. Um, can you tell our audience a little bit about what they can expect from this series? Um, well, the the I guess what what they can expect is two people uh, who are in love and desperate to have a child and can't do it, and the expense of IVF forces them to do something very extreme, and the series kind of plays out what the ramifications are of that. You know, they're incredibly desperate they want to make this happen they've been through the mill and so they decide to take this drastic step of stealing from their work in order to to help them fund their IVF and um you watch them undergo the stresses of the fallout of that basically it's kind of you know it's a relationship comedy set against the backdrop of a really high pressure crime situation do you know what I mean so it's kind of those things uh running concurrently alongside each other um really and in regards to the lack of romance that's because Catherine Ryan made it very clear that she didn't want to touch me during the course <laughs> of the filming that's true and that's because I feel like romance can come in many forms and some people are quite physically intimate and passionate uh and other people have married for nearly a decade and they show romance through you know acts of loyalty acts of service and you know I think the romance does heightened though you won't you won't read it immediately as like passion but these two are very united and very much in love but just trying to get that, away yeah assume it, just assume that every time they're not on camera they're absolutely smashing they're going for yeah. it <laughs> that's an image i needed thank you um <laughs> uh Ramesh, you also um co-created and wrote the series and it's quite an original concept as well i mean where did where did this idea come from Ben and I had this idea of like of seeing what the fallout is from committing a crime, and we and, and we just sort of thought that we sort of watched you know things like Ocean's Eleven and stuff like that, and you see the you see a crime being committed, and then we just thought what happens. We just thought we wanted to show something that happened after that, but we didn't want them to be we didn't want them to be criminals. We wanted them to be regular people, uh, just because we just felt like for a comedy. It would be easier. It's just better. It's just better for comedy if these people are kind of thrown into it as a result of their circumstances. So that was kind of the starting point. Um, and then everything else kind of grew from there, really. We, we we wanted this to be a relationship thing. We wanted to put those two people under stress. Um, and we wanted that relationship to be convincing. So we kind of uh, put all of those things together. And it was like, there were a lot of iterations of the show. Do you know what I mean? We, we played around with how much we wanted the crime to be at the forefront, how much we wanted the IVF to be at the forefront. We, and we wanted to achieve an, a, a balance, and hopefully we did. But, um, yeah, the, the starting point was very much like, what happens if two people end up committing something pretty radical in a very kind of regular, normal backdrop? Do you know what I mean? So that was, that was always a starting point. Yeah. Um, also, it's like you just mentioned the IVF and the fertility. That can be quite a, a touchy subject for some people as well. And to wrap that up in a comedy storyline and with the whole culture, you know, where everybody is offended at the slightest little thing these days. Um, was that a worry for either of you to come, uh, you know, filming this, knowing how it might go across? I mean, I think in... Um my stand up and on my podcast i've talked a lot about struggles with fertility and non-linear journeys to creating families and pregnancy loss and i think lots of comedians touch on a variation of subjects that might have darkness and might be very traumatic and very relatable to people um and our intention is never to poke fun in uh, a cheap way or minimize those terrible parts of people's lives, but to put lightness in the dark and to deal with real world situations and to write 
comedy lifting them, surrounding them, but never to take the mick out of the actual thing that's causing pain. I feel like fertility journeys are a part of life and comedy is about life. You have to have some drama in the comedy and you can still hopefully make people feel better about their situation or even distract them from the darkest parts of their situation and never be like, you know, diminishing the actual thing. Like we were, Ramesh, um, I mean, you can talk more about this, did like research and was certainly very sensitive surrounding the subject of IVF. Uh, yeah, we. I mean, we we wanted to handle the thing sensitively and make sure it's difficult because, as you said, that's quite a serious thing, and we're writing it in a comedy, and so we wanted to make sure that we handled that properly, um, and a lot of thought, like a lot of thought, went into how we portray it in this show. Like we, you know, we we didn't take that responsibility lightly, um, but at the same time, to your point about sort of people getting offended, I, I don't think that should be a driving force behind what you decide to write about I, I don't think you should allow yourself to not write certain things or tackle certain things because you're worried that people are going to get offended I mean I'm not I'm not looking to offend anybody I'm not looking to antagonize anybody but um, at the same time that's not really I, I think the moment you start allowing that to become part of your creative process you've got a problem really yeah definitely um now this show has quite a few comedians, uh, comedy actors um, within the series from just the two episodes that I saw, there was quite a few. Um, were you ever worried that there was like any too many cooks in the kitchen quite scenario going on at any point? Was there any clashes, comedy clashes, shall we say, behind the scenes? <laughs> Uh, I don't I, I think if you've got a comedy you just want to ram it full as many funny people as you possibly can do you know what I mean I, I don't think you know and, and the thing is like you know Catherine's a very generous performer I want the show to be good and so if somebody comes in and absolutely smashes the scene and it's hilarious that's great do you know what I mean I'm not I'm not sitting there going oh bloody hell they are funnier than I was in that scene what are we uh -huh. doing? like you know I don't give a shit about that I you know like I want the show to be funny and you know, for, for example, Tom Davis appears in a later episode. Uh, you know, Johnny Vegas is a steam sealer. There's no denying that. And when Tom Davis turns up, he's unbelievable in his scene. And I just think when I watch somebody be absolutely brilliant, as Catherine was throughout the whole six episodes, you just go, how amazing is this? Like this this show that we're working on has got these people being really brilliant. Do you know what I mean, I, 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 I don't see any negatives in that, really. There, there were no the clash. It's gig, isn't it? Yeah, and um, yeah, exactly. It's the same any gig, unless it's a prick, and then you just think, "I hope they." <laughs> but um, but um, I think um, we're in a very privileged position of knowing a lot of people and uh, who are funny, and so you kind of want to populate it with your friends, really. You know, if they're talented, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't use nepotism. To, I wouldn't put anyone shit in it just because they're a mate of mine. Do you know what I mean? Uh, much as many of my friends would want to be, but um, yeah, I, I kind of wasn't worried about that at all. I just thought we're really lucky. And a lot of these people that agree to do it, I just thought, I, you know, I just had you sort of like pinch yourself. You can't believe that they're willing to come and do it. So it was um, it was a proper treat, man. We're really happy. Yeah. You mentioned in Friends. I know you two have been friends for quite a few years, haven't you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, when you were when you were co-writing this, did you have Catherine in mind to take on the role as Alison? Yeah, it was written for Catherine. You know, I, I, when we when we first started developing the show the first decision that was made was that Catherine Ryan was going to be in it if she was up for it so um and I text Catherine when we're still originally developing the when we first had the idea and we got to a point where we knew that was what it's definitely going to be I text Catherine straight away and said what do you think of this as an idea um and she said yes because at that stage there's no commitment because most tv shows never make it to screen um but, yeah. but also that's the only way I'll ever be in anything because I'm terrible at auditions. So I'm just very lucky <laughs> that I have very wisely hooked on to the coattails of my super talented friends. <laughs> and then when they have something going on, I can be like, mm, I'm pregnant again, please. I need a job. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was always going to be Catherine. Yeah. OK, um, Catherine, your character, Alison, she's a bit like um, the cheese to Deacon's chalk, shall we say, and she's a bit more blasé in the fact that they've stolen this money. And at one point uh, early on, she spends over a grand on a handbag. 
which obviously sends Deacon spiralling. If you unexpectedly come into a ton of money, what, what would make you so frivolous? I did unexpectedly come into a ton of money. Um, I used to work in an office and before that I was a waitress and I never imagined that I would be embraced by comedy fans in the UK and I would get to tour and I would get to buy property in the UK. Um, so, I mean, that genuinely, I feel like in a roundabout way, I robbed Johnny Vegas uh, <laughs> so that I could support my child. Um, I The most frivolous thing I've ever purchased was a horse. And he wasn't, you know, British horses are not that expensive. You could just see a horse in a pub. Uh, he's not a race horse. He was like a little pony that my daughter rode. And he turned out to be a little bit problematic. He was mounting some of the mares and the mares are bigger than he was and they would really beat him up. So the farmer across the road rang me and he said, you got to stop this pony mounting the mares or else he's going to get killed. And I respect mares because they look after each other and they look after themselves. And if you are a little white pony who tries to mount them, they will kick you into the dirt. Yes. So I had to change his feed, take all the sugar out of his diet, which I didn't even know lowers the libido in men. And um, eventually we gave him to my daughter's best friend for free because he was such a liability in my life. So that was money absolutely wasted. My daughter fell off him a couple of times. He got beat up by some mares and then I gave him away. And that was the most frivolous expense I've ever made. Well, thank you so much both for your time today. It's been a pleasure and I can't wait to see the rest of the series because the first two episodes had me falling. Oh, good. <laughs> thank oh, you so brilliant. Much. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey!